I have a 2 megabits per second DSL internet connection, yet I'm able to browse the web without a lot of waiting, watch YouTube videos at 480p or 720p without buffering, and download giga-sized files without interrupting my usual web browsing usage. No illegal hacks, and no old Thea Joe hacks. But this is not a magic bullet that would make to become 20. Set your expectations low and remember that you still have limited bandwidth. We are just here to make the most out of the little we have. Now this is assuming several things first. One is that you have a solid connection to your Wi-Fi access point or you're wired via ethernet. Two is that your area isn't crowded with other neighboring Wi-Fi signals, especially if you're, let's say, a condo or an apartment complex. And three, your device is not a malware-infested mess or an ancient potato. Whether you're in a traditional computer like a desktop, laptop, Windows tablet, or you're in a mobile device like a smartphone or tablet, automatic updates will just cripple your already limited bandwidth. On Windows 7 and 8.1, setting Windows Update to check for updates but let me choose whether to download and install them is a must. On Windows 10, setting your current internet connection as metered will essentially do the same thing. But you will need to check metered connection once for every and every one of your different Wi-Fi and Ethernet connections. On Android, you can also disable automatic app updates within the Play Store settings and it will notify you that updates are available instead of downloading it automatically. On iOS, you can disable automatic updates in settings. But this doesn't mean you should not run updates. For Windows updates, I personally run it when the internet is not really being in use and my computer is just sitting idle. On Android and iOS, I run it overnight while charging. And come on, as long as you don't have a who knows where it came from power adapter and who knows what it's made of USB connection or a, a who knows who made it battery, you get the point. As long as you're using high quality and genuine parts for your phone and stuff, it should be fine. And if you're currently using Mac OS, you're gonna have to look it up on your own. I, I don't own a Mac. Nothing that, I don't hate Macs, uh, I, they're just expensive. Automatic updates is not the only culprit for using up all that precious bandwidth. Torrent clients running in the background, stop that from running automatically at startup. Bloatware that comes with your computer when you buy it, get rid of those. Malware, you should have sorted that out before even watching this video. Automatic cloud backups, antivirus software updates. We want to make sure your web browsing and your file downloads get high level VIP 5 star presidential priority over everything else on your internet connection. I mean, all devices should really have this feature as standard and implemented strictly. Whether it's a PC or mobile device, web traffic should be top priority. I'm looking at you, Windows updates. Seriously, come on. Doing things one at a time is key. Don't be downloading a large file or running torrents in the background while you're trying to browse the web or, you know, watch a video. Do those things when you're using the internet lightly. Like, let's say you're reading, reading articles or just chatting with someone on Facebook, or in this case, uh, typing Google Docs. Which means it's the perfect time to run Windows updates. I always have a dedicated computer that is its sole job is to do all the overnight downloads. If it's several gigs in size, I do it at night when I sleep and hopefully no one else is using the internet. It is usually an old computer just sitting around collecting dust or a computer that is too weak to be useful for anything else. Remember these things, netbooks? And if you don't have an old, weak computer sitting around, I mean, you can get those things pretty cheap used. Old Core 2 Duos and stuff. Configure it so that the screen turns off after a minute of no activity, or only turns off the display instead of going to sleep when the lid is closed or semi-closed. 
it is also best to run a laptop or a super efficient mini PC to save power and for peace and quiet. Personally, I also install a Linux Ubuntu distro with my favorite being Linux Mint XFCE. Everybody in the house needs to cooperate. Be that guy that polices everyone around in the house. Everything done in this guide should be done by everyone inside the house. Don't just think about your own devices. How about everybody else's computer in the house? Check those out. How about their smartphones or tablets? Check those out. If they don't want to cooperate, then it's up to you on how you're gonna screw with them. I mean, if you're a fairly advanced user, you can go to your router settings, bind your IP address to where it's served or static IP, then limit your bandwidth to 56K or something. I mean, you can go the extra mile and disconnect any currently unused device from Wi-Fi. Though this device is not gonna make a difference. This thing doesn't even have Wi-Fi. Do multiple internet speed tests on speedtest.net with no one else using internet connection. And if the speed doesn't match up with like the delta of more than 20% of the advertised speed of your internet connection, call your ISP and complain. Preferably several times consistently every 24 hours until they get the message. I'm looking at you, PLDT. Though I don't know if that's gonna work in the US though. I mean, good example, we're supposed to get three megabits per second in the, in our connection yet we're only getting two 2.1 consistently i already called up pldt and as long as it's not below 66 percent of the advertised speed they can't do anything about it thanks guys there are guides that tell you that to get a faster internet connection you place your wi-fi access point on optimal location in your house and using some silly tricks with tin foil or something adding repeaters and those crap that your ISP and ISP sponsored articles say, the real effective solution is to pay up or switch to a faster internet connection, especially when there are many of you in the house using the same internet connection all at once. The moment that multiple devices start playing back online video or something, it will buffer or load or lag that is easier said than done as it's a tall order for most people like finding water in the desert i could be over exaggerating the faster options could be poor value unreliable overpriced or extortion level expensive or not available at all i can get a faster internet connection for the same price i'm paying for this but it's still going to be single digit speeds. Also, data caps. I could get a much faster internet connection, 10 megabits. It's faster than this, but there's gonna be a 100 gigabyte data cap. Completely unacceptable. Since I no longer watch TV, I mean, YouTube is my primary source of entertainment. I, 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 I upload videos to YouTube. Movies and music are on demand. I pay for Spotify Premium. I don't wanna pay extra for gigabytes. Not to mention that internet resource is not limited by data usage. So what ends up causing congestion in most cases is not the amount of data used, but the number of people, programs, and devices using the network connection at the same time. The amount of traffic moved is not the limiting factor. The rate or speed which which the traffic moves is the limiting factor. And U.S. giant Comcast even tacitly admitted this in a leaked 2015 memo advising its customer service employees not to tell consumers their data cap policy was to help alleviate congestion because it wasn't. Data plans are based on a principle of fairness. Really? Really, Comcast? Those who use more internet data pay more, and those who use less internet data pay less. Except, of course, those who use less don't pay less. They pay exactly the same as before, so it's pretty obvious this is just a money grab, and they're just wanting to squeeze as much money out of their customers as they can. Data caps is pure, 100% farm-grade bull- I'd rather stick 
with my unlimited 2 megabits per second DSL internet connection, then go for 10 megabits with a 100 gigabyte cap. Right now, I'm waiting for the internet service provider Convergy ICT to arrive in my neighborhood. They can provide 25 megabits per second fiber for only 30 US dollars or 1,500 pesos a month with no data caps, which already blows everything else in the competition when it comes to the speed you get for the money you pay. Yeah, well, at least in the Philippines. I, 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 have, I know some countries like 10 bucks a month and you get fiber gigabit or something. I envy you guys. Likers gonna like, haters gonna hate, subscribe so you don't miss if my future videos, follow me on Twitter at TechieBengo, and comment down below other things that I may have missed about living with a slow internet connection. You guys have your own tips? Comment down below. Yo, and Convergy, I've been asking your customer care email with the name EJ Lianes, like check your inbox, regarding when is it the hell is it going to be available in my neighborhood? Ch like, ch chop chop. This video is going to take me hours to upload. Three, four hours.